So I'm Joel, I'm co-founder of Threebox, and uh, recently we've been working on a protocol called Ceramic. And today I'm going to give you like an overview of kind of goes through what Ceramic is and how it works, and how we can use it to control pin sets with uh, decentralized uh, identities or DIDs. All right, let's see if we can. Cool. Uh, let's see if we can move this thing. Cool. All right. So Ceramic is a protocol for unstoppable documents. So uh, what does that really mean? Well, it's documents that are uh, owned by someone. And in order to make updates to them, um, you have to sign them. So th there's like mutable documents that are signed uh, by some identity. And they're also anchored on chain. So we get uh, a stronger form of uh, immutability. Um, and a document has like a permanent link uh, that refers to the latest version of the document. Uh, but we can also refer to a specific version of a document. And I'll go into that a little bit in a, in a little bit. <laughs> uh, we can also construct a graph of documents. So I can have a document that points to another ceramic document. Uh, and I can like change that link later if I want to. Um, and I mentioned blockchain anchoring. So ceramic is kind of agnostic as to which blockchain a document is anchored on. Um, right now, Threebox is creating an anchoring service um, that runs on Ethereum, uh, but it, it, it's fairly straightforward to spin up like a, an anchoring service on like Filecoin or Bitcoin or whatever. Um, and we also have an account system uh, using DADs. Uh, so we have a, a ceramic native DAD method called 3ID. Um, and basically, it allows us to kind of unify accounts across uh, multiple blockchains to link to this kind of data identifier that we're sometimes referring to it as. Uh, and I'll kind of go more into that a bit later of how that works. Strange, I can't click the... Hmm. Okay, so what's a decentralized identity? Uh, so DID is a standard that's kind of emerged from a W3C uh, working group. And it's basically a standard for self-sovereign identity. Uh, so what a DID is, is that it's, it's a string identifier. Uh, usually the colon and then the DID method and then the, some form of string that I, I uniquely identifies the DID. Um, and you can use this DID identifier string to resolve a DID document. And in this document, you have public keys, so like a signature key, a public encryption key. So you can use that to like verify signatures from that uh, identity. You can use that to do a key exchange with the identity, so you can like send them encrypted messages. And the DAD document might contain like uh, references to like different services that this uh, DAD has. Um, DADs have fairly wide adoption. There are over or almost sixty registered DAD methods. Uh, and most of the prominent blockchain systems have some form of DID method associated with them, like either that they have created or that people have created on top. I think Ethereum has like more, uh, at least three different ones. Um, some governmental ID system have been experimenting with DIDs and like issuing credentials to citizens. Um, there's also something called Decentralized Identity Foundation that develops uh, and maintains kind of standards around DIDs. Um, and if you're in the DAD community, you'll all also uh, inevitably get to hear about verifiable credentials almost directly. So basically, verifiable credential is like you can make a claim about something. So I can claim that the sky is blue, and then I might use my DAD public key to sign that claim, and you can verify that I, I've claimed that the sky is blue. Actually, it's not very blue right now. This is very dark. <laughs> um, all right. So. Uh, with that, you can create a peer to peer attestation system, or you can have like verifications from uh, official authorities. Um, all right. So, what, what, what's ceramic? So, the ceramic network is basically a network of these ceramic documents, which I mentioned before. And in this diagram, you can each triangle here is kind of like a ceramic node. And a ceramic node is kind of built on top of IPFS, so LibidP and IPLD. And then it connects to a blockchain. So you see the, two, uh, the three nodes to the left are connected to Ethereum. The three nodes to the right are connected to Filecoin. And the, the kind of two nodes in the middle are connected to both. So um, 
when I update a document, uh, that update will be anchored on the blockchain. And, and, but Ceramic is kind of agnostic. So we kind of have this unified network of documents um, that kind of provide metadata around blockchains in, in a way. Um, so once, so, so, and also like each node kind of decides which documents to pin and, and maintain the latest data of. Very similar to um, how I, I, you can kind of decide which documents to pin or which, which files to pin in IPFS. Um, and yeah, it uses libp2p to kind of sync updates um, and IPFS to sync data of these documents. Um, and yeah, there is no, no inherent uh, kind of backup systems. So you kind of still have to pin this data. Uh, but we're enabling like these ceramic nodes to have like a configurable backup system. So you may, maybe use like Filecoin or like use a pinning service or maybe use some other blockchain network like Arweave or, or storage or whatever. Um, cool. So uh, <laughs> the anatomy of a ceramic document. So in order to kind of understand how a ceramic document works, you have to look at the, the, the data structure that's in stored in IPLD. So when you create a document, you create a Genesis record. Uh, and then that Genesis record get anchored on the blockchain. Then we have kind of version zero of the document. When I want to make an update, I sign um, and, uh, and a signature, make a signature record that contains a signature over like the payload of the update to the document. And that also gets anchored on chain. And then I use libp to kind of communicate uh, the latest uh, CAD of the document to all other nodes that are interested in the same document. And then I can do the same thing again, and now I get version two of the document. Um, and as you can see, uh, the anchor record contains some proof metadata, which points to like a blockchain transaction. So the proof metadata kind of describes which blockchain uh, it has been anchored on. And uh, yeah, so the document has an ID, uh, and that's basically ceramic colon slash slash, and then the CID of the Genesis record. And that ID of the document is always the same. So when I come online and want to know the state of a given document, I, I can, using the doc ID, I can resolve the Genesis record. And then I have to kind of ask the, the network about like, hey, do you have any more recent state of this document? And other nodes can reply uh, with, with updates. Uh, and as I get them from other nodes, I can verify that the uh, whole record or whole log of records are correct. And if I get like a conflicting log with two different paths, like first I check that the, the updates are valid. If both paths are actually valid and signed by the correct key, um, I just use the one that was anchored earlier uh, on, on a, a, the given blockchain. Uh, so we have kind of a conflict resolution mechanism. Uh, oh, one thing I forgot to mention also is that um, the Genesis record specifies like the owner of the document. So that's uh, usually a DID. And each signature record that we make and updates has to be signed by the owner DID in order to be valid. Um, cool. And another record type. Uh, so, so these kind of have uh, signatures and anchors as like signed uh, with like a public private key pair and then anchored. But we might want to have documents that are controlled by a DAO or contract or something like that. Uh, so we want to also create a uh, record type that's like a DAO vote outcome or something like that, uh, which basically gives, makes this kind of more flexible. Um, and I sh I'll show a quick use case of that uh, in a bit. All right, so in, in ceramic, there's this concept of document types or doc types. Uh, we have created three uh, kind of standard ones, but you can add more. So right now we have tiles. Tiles is a very generic doc type, which you can basically store any type of JSON data, uh, and they're owned and controlled by a DID. Um, and you can use them to store like schemas and uh, policies, maybe profiles, generally metadata. And interestingly, for, for this talk, uh, pins. Um, and of course, all of these documents are so change what the comment is happening. 
uh, we kind of mentioned this before, is the DAD method that's native to ceramic. It's quite lightweight and, and uh, probably one of the more scalable DAD methods. And it's because of the way uh, ceramic documents are structured, it has like built in secure key revocation. 3AD was actually the use case we uh, built the ceramic protocol for, and then we kind of generalized it. Um, account links uh, it, are interesting. They basically allow you to link uh, a blockchain account to a DAD. So I can link in my Ethereum account to my 3AD, and I can link my Filecoin account to my 3AD, and I can have kind of a, a unified data account that I use to go to the applications that live in different blockchains and um, use the kind of surrounding metadata and, and my user data uh, across these different apps. And you can create your own doc type. Uh, so for an example, could be like a verifiable credential, and you can use ceramic to revoke the credential. Um, and one, in, uh, one person in our community actually suggested uh, having like a dynamic rule set doc type. It basically allows you to, uh, when you create the document, you specify a uh, JavaScript binary that will be used to va validate the tr state transition of the document. And you can run this JavaScript binary in like secure ECMAScript, which is like a secure um, container for JavaScript. Uh, and, and that's uh, super cool. Um, so that could be like a future uh, doc type in Ceramic. OK, so now let's actually talk about pinning. Uh, and uh, in particular, how can a pin set be controlled by a DAD? So I think this slide is fairly straightforward once we've kind of gone through and got a basic understanding of all the concepts before. So basically, we have a DID. The DID controls a tile. And so now we have two pin set tiles uh, that one DID control. And uh, this pin set tile basically contains a list of CIDs that we want to pin. Uh, and then we can basically give the uh, state of this um, uh, tile to uh, an IPFS cluster, for example. Uh, and the IPFS cluster could just like pin uh, those CIDs. Um, and in this example, yeah, we have two different pin set tiles that run the ID control. Uh, we can have potentially also some pin set tiles that uh, multiple DADs control. Maybe we have some kind of multisig structure, like two out of three need to sign in order to change the pin set. Um, and yeah, the clusters kind of follow the pin set tile and pin according to what's in that. An interesting aspect of this is that we can use the versioning of um, ceramic documents in order to um, kind of look at previous versions of the pin set. Uh, so we can see kind of how the pin set has changed over time. Uh, another interesting thing is that we can have DADs that delegate control to other DADs. So in the example, we have a, a DAO that has a DAD uh, in ceramic and can delegate uh, access control to another DAD that uh, is it might, might be a user and the user might update the, the pin set tile. Um, and then another user might update another pin set tile, both kind of owned and controlled by the DAO DID. Um, and we think this is really powerful as a concept to use kind of DIDs to control these pin sets, because DIDs is this kind of generalized uh, standard that is used uh, kind of across the Web3 ecosystem, but also in uh, kind of more traditional, um, uh, like more kind of governmental use cases where um, basically there's like people looking at using DADs for, from like a lot of different perspectives and in a lot of different ecosystems. And if we can tie this, make, make this kind of DAD standard as the entry point to how we're going to And we're also looking for like, as I kind of mentioned before, uh, to use like create DAD for move the SIGs, for house. An interesting thing is like allowing a, a NFT to control a DAD. And another thing we've been looking at is actually using a uh, NFT as the owner of a, uh, of a tile. That would allow us to, whoever is the owner of the NFT right now, would be allowed to update the content of the document. Uh, and yeah, this allows us to kind of have any blockchain uh, identity control the pin set. All right, so this is a little bit rough um, and probably not exactly 
this looks like. Uh, but basically, this is the gist of it. So you have a pin tile contains an array of CIDs, um, and, and that's really all that's needed. But then you might add some other things, like, oh, I want this uh, I want the, the cluster that the service provided that cluster to represent factor three or like be available in the EU and the US. Um, you can imagine like a lot of different settings that could probably go into this. Um, right, so, so this is kind of from the DAD's perspective. Another uh, interesting thing that we have been uh, thinking about what you could use these kind of for is for actually the service provider to find their service in a service policy tile. And this is kind of a very rough example. Real uh, service policy would need to be much more fle fleshed out. Uh, but here you have like a description, you have a request endpoint, or so with a certain uh, endpoint that allow uh, you to kind of specify a uh, inset tile uh, document ID. And then we have a request schema, so that might, and that's like a schema that's also defined in ceramic documents. And uh, that schema defines kind of which, uh, how the input data into this REST endpoint needs to look like. And then the service might define like a payment that you can make for uh, pinning this data for maybe a specific amount of time. Um, and um, it could be like a payment channel with using something like Connect or Lightning or whatever. Or it could be like a centralized service, which you need to go and create an account. Um, yeah, I think there are many different ways of kind of approaching this, but uh, the general idea of letting service providers have their service be discoverable in this kind of uh, open network uh, is really powerful. Um, all right, so Ceramic uh, and development of it is led by Freebox. Uh, and our aim for this is kind of to uh, create a connected layer for um, where, where uh, different users and services and applications can provide data about themselves and the services that they provide. Uh, and that can kind of be linked to different blockchains to and connect different peer-to-peer -peer databases to get into kind of one uh, uh, general metadata layer. Uh, and it can also connect um, with services as we saw in this um, policy. You can kind of wrap Web2 services within like a, a a service policy document and like have maybe do microphones for uh, requests. And also lets users kind of bring their data along them to different applications that might live on different blockchains and such. Um, um, we have a specification uh, on our GitHub for how the protocol works. Uh, everything is open source. Uh, we love to collaborate with uh, anyone. And we have a proof of implementation in TypeScript. Uh, it has a CLI, and it's web native, so it can run in the browser, and basically runs the whole protocol in the browser um, using JS IPFS. Uh, uh, right. So thank you much. Uh, to, uh, enjoy it. Awesome. Thank you so much for that. Awesome to get, get a deeper dive. I, I see my own question in the chat, which was um, what you were describing with tiles that control pin sets sounds really similar to threads or at least snapshots of threads. Can you talk a little bit about similarities, differences, kind of how those things work under the hood? Yeah, that, that's a good question. So, so th they're similar in the sense that you kind of have this lot of it. It's like a pen only. Uh, the, the main thing is that uh, tiles are on chain. Um, so they kind of uh, provide more, uh, I don't know, like auditability or, or you kind of have more rigid uh, verifiability of the data. Uh, so you, and I think that, that's kind of the main difference. Uh, and I think textile threads, for example, are more um, are better for like fast paced collaboration and like things that update quickly, whereas uh, ceramic is kind of moving a little bit slower and uh, because you kind of need to put things in. Um, yeah. Thank you. That's a great answer. Um, clears it up for me. 
Anyone else have questions for Joel? Awesome, awesome talk. Ooh. Recommendations for pinning service today. What can they do to get ready to pin ceramic documents? Hmm. Um, so, so we hope that like the, it should be fairly simple to uh, spin up like the, the ceramic uh, CLI tools. One thing that would be helpful, I think, would be uh, kind of to learn more from providers uh, what what the requirements is for like nodes were um, in or that, that they use for pinning. So um, what kind of helps you um, run the pinnings, pinning at scale basically. Um, because now we have like one, uh, one implementation of this that kind of is designed to both run in the browser and act as kind of your local node. And it could probably run as like a, a larger node as well, but you can't like run it at like large scale. So uh, requirements around that would be like super interesting to hear about. Awesome. Anyone else have any questions for Joel? Another one? What kind <laughs> of IPFS features would be helpful for ceramic documents? Um, so, so one thing we're working on right now is just like um, kind of having a native way to address uh, signed and encrypted objects in IPFS. And we're trying to make a codec for um, Jose and Kose, which are standards from uh, ITF for like wrapping and kind of describing and encrypted data. Um, so automatically decrypted data would be super cool. Um, and, and hopefully we can make that happen. Um, using this um, uh, Jose or and or Kose. Um, there's probably like a billion things, uh, like smaller things, but I can't think of any right now. Oh, I guess, so one thing we do is put uh, like uh, the, the hash of the transaction, which uh, the anchoring was included as uh, CID. So we put the um, Ethereum uh, transaction CID and it would be super cool if we could like sync the um, the blockchain over IPFS as well. I know uh, Kumavis, among other people, have been working on that, but um, that seems like still uh, a little bit uh, away. 